Hi, this is Fritz from JAGMTE.com. Thought I'd take a minute and do a quick tutorial on the cap assemblies for the Scepter military fuel cans. For those of you that are new to it or unfamiliar, uh, this is the cap. That's the cap with nothing in it. Chances are you have a uh, military surplus can that you've purchased and the cap strap is the same color as the cap in the can. What that indicates is that this can was designed for diesel fuel. Uh, the military uses pretty much exclusively diesel fuel in these cans out in the field, which means that if you're going to use it for gasoline, you're going to have to make a couple of changes to the can. But in the meantime, uh, I'll explain those changes as I show you how to disassemble a cap. A cap. Go ahead and bring this one in and screw the cap strap pops off of that flange and off the threads fairly easily. So here is your complete cap assembly. Almost complete. This one doesn't have a gasket in it for some reason. So to disassemble a cap assembly, most people are hesitant to pull on this because they're afraid they're going to break the strap. I haven't broken one that way. I prefer to, that's how I do it. If you prefer, you can use a large prying tool and stick it underneath there and twist it to pop it off. But you can actually just carefully pull it off. That will release the flange, which in most cases would have a gasket on it, and that's what would come out of the cap. So these are your four components of your cap assembly. Your cap, your flange, your strap, and your gasket. Now what happens on a uh, rubber gasket that's used in the diesel fuel cans, if you use it for gasoline, it will end up breaking somewhere I have a broken flange that I would love to show you but oh, here it is the gasket retention ring that's molded to the inside of the cap see this one is partially broken what happens is the gasoline causes the rubber gasket on the uh, diesel cans to swell and that swelling actually breaks this retention ring off of the flange and you end up with you open your can one day and either this will be hanging on by a thread or or it'll be missing it'll be down inside your down inside your can and the gasket will be all rolled up so if you have matching strap on a military surplus can you need to change it to a Viton gasket so in the before Scepter went to their marbled grayish Viton gasket they did use some black Viton gaskets and they are identified by a yellow mark on the inside cut. So if you happen to have a yellow mark on the inside cut, it is a black Viton gasket. But most everything you'll see nowadays from Scepter is the marbled gray. But if you buy it aftermarket, uh, like most people have to, it's black. So here we're going to do a quick reassembly of a cap. Actually, before we do that, I want to show you other failures that can occur on the cap assembly. You see how there are a variety of cracks in this one? If you have cracks in the center of your cap assembly, like this one has a crack that corresponds with the outside edge of the, of the button, this part of the uh, flange is actually part of the seal for the can. So when you have a gasket on this flange, it requires both the gasket and the flange in order to seal the can. If you compromise the flange anywhere on this inside area, the can is no longer sealed and will vent through that crack. That is not an unusual thing to happen. As you can see, that one's broken. This one has several cracks on it. It just happens. You know, there's no way to avoid it. Sometimes they crack from the outside and, and run in and then pass this retention ring and the can starts to vent, at which point you're going to have to replace your flange. So let's do a quick reassembly of a can, or of a cap. Put your, if you're going to use gasoline, put your Viton gasket back on your flange. Lay it inside your cap so the button is facing through. Put your strap so it lines up with that. Put it on a hard surface so everything's lined up together. What I've chosen to do is take a half inch piece of PVC pipe and put a little uh, furniture foot on it so I can apply even pressure and not have it slip off 
So you press down, and once it snaps, it's back together. What happens if you use something hard like the back of a screwdriver, it can slide around and slide off of the button area as you're trying to put it on, and that is what causes the cracks, like these little cracks at the outside of the button on this one. That's probably from a tool that slipped off and put pressure here on the side instead of in the middle when reassembling a cap. But as you can see, it's fairly simple, fairly straightforward. Cap, flange, gasket. We'll do one more reassembly just to show you. There you go. That's all there is to it. Good luck to you.